It's our homegrown basil, strained out. And roll it around a little bit. Which is what you want. Cut every, every piece of it. Bowl already done right here. Warmer. All right, so this is all the juice we want. So we filled the pot a little bit too full. Good morning, everybody. Today in this video, me and my family are gonna be showing you how to make some tomato sauce from all of our homegrown tomatoes and spices. Before I start, I just wanna say we're not sponsored by any of the companies of the equipment that we're using today, but we have found that this equipment that we have works great. One of these baskets is a half bushel. Obviously combined, it makes a full bushel. And this is what we're gonna be canning today. We're gonna to start out with our plum tomatoes out of the field. They weren't quite ripe when mom picked them, so we had to let them sit a day or two, maybe even three. So I ripen a little bit more. Then we have Graham and Sydney here taking the stems off. If there's any bad spots, cutting that out of them. And then, actually that's what Sydney's doing. And then my Graham is dicing them up small enough to go through the food processor, which she's just throwing them in this bowl here. She has a bowl already done right here. Just little tiny slices. And now Colton is putting them through the processor. Here's a nice juice coming out. And then it spits the seeds and the skin of the tomato into this bowl, which we'll probably just either throw out or give to my one worker's pigs. good. Made in Italy. That's a good one. Yeah, that was perfect. With all the hail we've had, the tomatoes have a lot of little marks in them. She's actually getting some nice ones now. And when I say marks, I mean stuff like that. But there's a lot of good to those tomatoes with spots, so they're just going to cut them out and use them. Do you usually heat the tomatoes up in like the oven? Or in hot water on the stove. So here's all the skins and seeds. There's actually still quite a bit of juice in here. So we're gonna take them and put them back through a second time and squeeze out a little bit more. No part goes to waste. Well, I guess the skin a little bit goes to waste. See all that juice from the second time around. Flows through nicely. Not flows, but the skin's out. So now you can see there's not really much juice. It's almost completely seeds and skin. And a lot more juice. We have all the juice strained out. We pour in this pot on the burner. And how long does it cook on there for? Hours. Is there a certain time? Until it boils or what? The, long, as thick as you want. the longer you cook it, the thicker it'll get. Gotcha. 
So that could take two hours to, for this to boil and get to where you want it to? Uh, more like three or four. Wow. You can probably do it in two hours. Though. And then you have peppers and onions to go in it. So he's got about a four foot wooden spoon here to stir this and it's like 12 inch pot. Small, it goes right through it quick. So it's flat on the bottom, does a very good job. <clears throat> So do you want it to boil or no? You simmer. Want to simmer? So you want to simmer for four hours or two hours, whatever you want it to. Until it gets to the thickness that you You want. can boil it, but if it starts to scorch, then you're in trouble. Then it's all over. Yeah. Then add sugar. What kind of peppers are these? These are Italian now. We're going to add Italian now and cherry. Hot cherry, right? Yep. Not too many of them, just a little bit. And for a double batch like we're doing, we're adding about 12 of these. It should be about six, but these are a little bit smaller. So we're adding extra. But it can be however many peppers that you want. Do you need uh, garlic clean too? Yeah, we have that over here. So she has this handy dandy little gadget here. What she'll do is she'll take the toe of the garlic and she'll put it inside of there. And then she'll take the palm of her hand and roll it around a little bit. And this will take the skin off of the garlic to make it nice and clean. Wow, that's fancy. <laughs> yeah. So for one bushel of tomatoes, it is four bulbs of garlic. Cindy, she got all these peppers cut. So I've got the juice at a fairly hard boil right now. If you have a good pot and you keep stirring it, you can get away with cooking it a little harder. All the steam you see coming off is the water cooking out of it, which is what you want. So you end up with a thicker and more concentrated sauce. And as it cooks down, you can see where I started here at the top and where I'm at now. I probably cooked down a half an inch so far. Still have a long way to go. If I pull the spoon out here, you can see it's still clear. You got some jelly on your finger. Hmm? You got jelly on your finger? <laughs> jelly and garlic. Great combination. I had to pound these to get the skins to come off. Cause look at the size of that clove. One clove. <laughs> That's huge. It's coming apart because I cracked it. This is a Pampered Chef garlic shredder. I think we should get a couple of them. Oh. <laughs> and give them out for gifts. I think they're the best thing I've ever made. Wow. So what do you do? Just take the top off and put a toe of garlic in there? The garlic goes in those. Oh, so you put two, two toes of garlic. Yeah? Show me how you put some. I have to get one small one. Some of these are huge. They're so old And you put that through there. And you twist it. How easy is that? <laughs> so Cindy's got her glove on. And now she's doing oh, cherry right. hot peppers. Very carefully. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 
We are gonna do five cherry peppers for our bushel of tomatoes, but again, you can add however many you want to. So you can see here after about two hours or so how far down this pot has cooked. Probably a good three, four inches. And this is only one pot of our double batch. We got the second pot here. We're gonna combine both into one. So all our sauce is in one pot now. Just barely fit, so I'm trying to stir it carefully. This is two half bushel baskets here. It's been cooking for probably two and a half hours. I'm gonna go, I think, about two more. There's no set time limit, it's just how thick you want the sauce to be. Most recipes are gonna tell you to add uh, some tomato paste to help thicken it up. The thing of it is though, when you add that, you're adding store-bought tomatoes to it. So I still add some, I just try to cook it down as much as I can before adding that to get it as thick as possible with our own homegrown tomatoes before adding that. I think our recipe calls for eight six ounce cans per batch. That would have been 16 in this pot. My goal is to get it cooked down enough that I only need half of that. So eight total. Uh, and I buy the regular paste you can get it with oregano and basil and all that, so all those seasonings already in it. But uh, we dehydrated our own, and so I'm excited to add those. So what we have is basil, and this one is parsley, and then his graham dehydrated oregano, which we're gonna add also. All right, so here we have all the peppers and onions that we cooked, uh, along with the garlic. I'm gonna now emulsify everything with my Graham's emulsifier. It's gonna chop everything up into smaller pieces. And it saves a lot of time to go to and cut every, every piece. Okay, so we've cooked all the peppers and onions in oil, but looking at it now, I think it's quite a bit of oil. So we're trying to filter some of that out so it doesn't all end up in our sauce. So this is an oil separator. We just have to let this sit here. And you'll start to see the oil float to the top. Well, it seals well, really cool. Juice now. So now pour the rest in here. I mean, once you use slowly, it, slowly, because of well, the very name, anyway, you will be the oil. Used to it. All right, so this is all the juice we want to go in the sauce. Right. This is water mixed with the pepper flavoring. Well. Okay. So that's. So that's all the oil that's left in there now. That's all oil, or mostly all oil. So now with all the oil separated out, I'm just trying to chop up the last few, few pieces. There's a couple of big onions, a couple of big peppers left. All right, so now we're gonna add our uh, emulsified peppers and onions to the sauce. I don't know if it's all going to fit yet, but we're going to add as much as we can. Uh, 
just, cool. Should we just go for it? Oh, gosh. oh, we did it. You did it. It's not too bad. We just can't let it boil. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so then we're going to start stirring this. Carefully. Maybe we won't start stirring this. <laughs> so we filled the pot a little bit too full and I uh, can't stir it. So we're going to take some out of here for now. All of our peppers, onions, garlic is in the sauce. That's two half bushel baskets in there. It's been cooking for probably four hours or so now. Uh, it's time to add the salt, sugar, oregano, basil, and the tomato paste. Uh, for the recipe, we add about a half cup of salt and a cup and a half of sugar. But what I've been doing the past two years is cutting that in half and then taste testing it from there. Because if we cook this down a lot, it really concentrates the flavor and you'll end up with really too salty or too sweet of, uh, of sauce. So I just added a half cup of time at a time. And then Sydney stirs it in. Are you gonna get your stuff? So yeah. You That homegrown basil. This is homegrown dried, freshly dehydrated basil. Calls for a teaspoon, so I guess I'm just gonna estimate. This is in a Walmart container, but it's from my gram. I will play. Same thing, you just try to crunch it up as much as you can. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah. Now this wasn't very crunchy. So I don't know how that's gonna work. It's working pretty good. Looks so pretty. Beautiful. <laughs> so we're gonna let this cook for a few minutes and then uh, try it, see how it tastes. And we'll add more salt or sugar from there based on how it is. We've been cooking this down now for about five hours or so. And uh, this is what we're left with. Everything but the paste is in here. So I think we're getting ready to add that right now. Like I said, you can cook it however long you want to. It just gets to be a long day. So these are our four cans that we're gonna add. Like I said, I just add the plain without any flavoring. So we have our jars in the oven right now heating up. I set the oven temperature to about 180 just to get them warmed up. Ideally, you'd have your pot on top of the stove here and you wouldn't have to take them out into the garage. But since I have to do that, I'm gonna put them on a pan and cover them up with a paper towel to try to keep them all a little bit warmer, a little bit longer. Okay, so here's the four jars I just took out of the oven. I'm going to do everything as fast as possible once it's out of the oven before it cools down. So I'm going to scoop out, get the funnel. I 
I leave a little, I go to about the bottom edge. Then I take a little vinegar, put it on paper towel, and go around the rim just to clean it off of any oil that might be on there and make sure we get a good seal. And that's that. Okay, so we're down to the last couple jars in the pot. Sydney's stirring it just to make sure it doesn't burn. We've already had a few jars start to pop here. I think we're gonna get a few more than I thought. So this is what we finished up with. Thanks for watching today. We are gonna call it a wrap because we're just gonna wait for these to cool. We're gonna clean up our mess. But remember, it ain't much, it ain't much but, it's but it's honest, honest work. work.